Alrighty, so here's what we got cooking. Today we're gonna, you made snapshots on Wednesday. Friday we had an impromptu vacation. Hopefully everybody doesn't mind that. Alright, how many people really dug their impromptu vacation? Slept in. Did that work, getting everything out through via Facebook, G Plus, and, and Angel? Did that work okay? Yeah. Except I got an email alert at 2.45 in the morning. Yes, yes, for those... Yes, but you know, hey, if, if you guys were up early in the morning, if you guys were up early in the morning, that was honking awesome. What's really scary is when you posted to Facebook and all of a sudden your students start commenting right there off the bat. So I'm like going, okay, why are you awake all honking night long? All right. So on Wednesday, on Wednesday, we all made snapshots. So there's kind of a convoluted process to doing this, right? But remember, the snapshot is how you can come back and do more stuff with what you're doing, right? So we've already done created. We can delete it. We can actually add specific permissions to this. We can make it public or private, right? If you leave it private, then that means it's yours, all right? That means it doesn't go into the public repository, which is generally a good thing, especially if you continue to use EC2 user in your key, right? The only problem is that if you used your key, no one else will ever be able to use this AMI because you don't have a generic key that goes along with it, all right? So if you keep it private, it's yours, all right? If you want to create a volume, right, you have to go ahead and leave it exactly the way that it was, right? But in volume size, you can actually pick a size so if you've got everything good to go and you've got it basically on a little teeny tiny partition, you can actually make it one terabit in size, right? And then how many IOPS um, operations it will do. And then where you want this thing to be. Remember your availability zone is stuck where you're at, okay? So we're not going to do that. If we create an image, we're actually creating an AMI, an actual Amazon machine image, and that's what we're going to do today. So you give it a name. If you're typing right now, stop, because you're going to do this again later on, right? Architecture, so 386, right? Description, Dan's AMI, right? The root volume is your size that you started out with, 8 gigs. You can always make it bigger later, right? It's root, it's devices, and all the rest of it. If you turn it into an elastic block storage volume, then you have to kind of deal with that as a way of doing process. Elastic block storage is basically, remember, everything that's running around in, in memory, right? Or you can do an instant store volume. An instant store is where you can store all the stuff that you've got cooking. And you can actually give it a specific number, give it a specific device number, right? And then we can go, yes, create. All right, so. It's going to give you your own tag number, right? So this now just became your AMI. Of course, it's in its nice, handy-dandy, friendly Amazon. Sure, it's not going to say Dan's AMI. It's going to come up with some nice, big, happy, honking number, right? But the idea is to try to remember that number as much as you can. But what's going to end up happening when you go here is that it will show up. Yep, it will show up here. And you basically are pretty much so good to go. And I'm glad to see that there's already some people that have done this. So that's awesome. They don't have to do it again today. Then, then once, yep. And then once it's all done being built, you want to register your new AMI, right? Kernel ID default, RAM disk default, and then just leave it. Now remember, this is your URL to get to the manifest for what you've got cooking, right? So this is the really important part is that if you want to pick up this thing later on, right, that's how you're going to pick it up when it's fully registered. Right? right now you're going to get an error because it doesn't exist. 
right, is going to take about 10, 15, 20 minutes for this thing to generate. All right, because we're working with eight gigs, we're in a queue. Amazon people are doing this all the time, so they queue up your spot so when a slot becomes available and open, then it goes ahead and does it. And basically what you do is you have a manifest file. There's no such bucket, it doesn't exist yet. All right, the specified bucket does not exist. CIS 210, that's mine, right? The request ID, that's this unique request ID and where I am in the queue for this process. And then the host ID is this big, long, huge, honking, 128-bit hash, all right? And then just go ahead and register. Invalid manifest. <coughs> oh, that's interesting. Invalid manifest. See if it doesn't like the numbers. Nope, doesn't like the number. Nope. All right. It's not liking anything I'm doing here. See if it likes test. Nope. All right. We'll come back to that. But you want to register it, and we'll figure out what's going on with that. Why it doesn't like my path at all? But that's essentially all you've got to do for right now. So it kind of makes sense. All right. So you pull up your spot instance. I'm sorry, you pull up your snapshot, <coughs> click it, create image, give it a name, give it a description, test yes create, then you can go ahead and see it's pending. and then you register the new AMI. I'm trying to launch that. Mm -mm. I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on with the path. Let's figure this one out. No, this is interesting because I haven't seen it do this before. Hold on just a second because I'm trying to solve a problem here first. So I'm really kind of curious as to what the issue is with this. Okay, we'll try to figure this one out because it sounds like I've got a lot of questions in the background. All right, so I'll come back to this. But that's basically all it is you need to do once you've got a gun. And again, it's just kind of waiting for all this stuff to actually happen. So give it a minute and a half, and then you're pretty much so good to go. But that's all there is to this particular part of the process. Sound good? Yes, as soon as we, re as soon as we register it. If, you, if you've already got it, yes, you can just go ahead and launch it and do exactly how you would do it with everything else that you've got cooking. If you just want to go ahead and launch it, that's cool too. Registering it kind of gives you a chance to go do stuff later on. And just going from there, make sure you choose your key pair, right? and then you should be pretty well good to go from there. It's just the same as everything else. But this allows you to pick back up where you were at, right? But it's also kind of cool that to register the AMI when you're kind of doing this, is that if you make a standard company image or you have a standard company image, you register that AMI for yourself, and then you can always come back up off that standard company image. Because you're gonna have things on it like antivirus and company specific <laughs> tools, maybe a host-based IDS, maybe you have specific things on it. You can actually make different AMIs what you're going to do, to create it once, 
and then go through it. And if you need to update it, if there's new patches or whatever, you just update it there and you go through this whole process again and kill the old registered AMI. So you can always launch on a company specific instance. Yes. 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 Yeah, a company is always going to want to work with their own image, right? You bring a new bunch of computers in and they go ahead and they flatten it and put the company image on it. You can literally take the company image and do the same thing here. And that's a real handy time saver, especially if you've got, as we move later on into this, we're going to be doing things like doing multiple deployments of multiple computers. It's always easier to have that one image that we worked with that's our standard company default image rather than going through and creating images for various different things. So we always have the company antivirus, we always have the company IDS, we always have the company whatever. So can Yes, exactly. Which would be interesting if you wanted to customize a desktop for you and then use that as part of the Citrix. So when I remote log in, it will snapshot it for me. Yeah, basically, but it's a big, huge honk and Roman profile. But and, I've, but and then in Citrix, I've seen some roaming profiles be 8, 16 gigs. So, and then these are these are people that need to back away from the computer when they're when they're that huge. All right, Mariah, you had a question. Okay, anybody else have any questions? All right, so your mission today then is to repeat these steps until you get tired of it. And when you get tired of it, if you're on a fast track, go work on the next step on this one. Sound good? Maybe? Yeah. All right. Yes, Carl, what you got? Can you repeat that question for me? Yes, you did that on Wednesday last week. Mm. No, the snapshot's basically its own little compartment. So if you have a running instance over here, that snapshot is a, is a copy of that running instance from the time you made it. Yep. Anything you did after that, it don't care about. Yeah, I get that. Right, and then from the snapshot, you just launch a new instance off that snapshot. Especially if you made changes after you made the snapshot. Yeah. Yeah. So again, the idea is to keep on doing this until you get really, really, really honking tired of doing this today. All right. I'm going to figure out why the thing won't let me register it and see if I can come up with a good explanation on why it doesn't like the word CIS Dan 210. Yes, sir. We launch it again. Yep. Yep. Because remember, it's that whole wax on, wax off thing. I'm feeling a whole lot like Mr. Moto today. Miyagi, whatever. Mr. Keen. Mr. Moto, Mr. Miyagi, I'm really easy with that, wax on, wax off. I'm good with that today. It's about my speed. They should call this something other than quick start, because it's not quick. They should call it slow start. Well, that's just the firewall settings. So you guys got to remember what the firewall settings are. Yes, ma'am. Until I figure out why it's not liking the C or I's or S's or Dan or 210. Unless you guys can figure out, and if you do, let me know, because that's a new one to me. Maybe they did something changey on the back end. So, um, as far as registering it, it's looking for this section part to implement right here, or what is the section that we're still in here normally? That is, that's where we're airing out. It's not liking the naming convention that I'm giving it, so go cancel. Yep. Until I figure out why, just go ahead and cancel out. So you normally don't know the input? I don't know what it's looking for there. Yep. So this click on launch. Okay. And you should be good to go. Yes, sir. Did you make a snapshot? Uh -huh. Oh, watch the tapes. Watch the tapes. So we walked all the way through that on Wednesday, okay? It's integrity. Just go to the classroom and, and watch the tapes. All right. Now click on yours, click on the, and then go launch. And you should be good to go. Do you have a minute? 
It takes a while. All right. Are we good? Any other questions? Okay. All right. Save this guy off.